Hi guys, welcome to episode 16. Today I've got a new format that I've been working on. I, due to a popular request, I had a few different users ask if I could incorporate clips of the tracks that I was talking about into my reviews. And I had to do some deliberation to figure out how I was gonna do it. Am I gonna put them at the end? Am I gonna talk over them? And I decided to go with um, a little bit of uh, interspersed clips mixed with my narrative and, and you know some of my stories around the songs. So without further ado, <clears throat> the label that I want to discuss today is a monster progressive label, probably one of the most influential and groundbreaking progressive labels to, to come out in the early 2000s, and that is Border Community. Border Community was uh, started by James Holden back in 2003. And when it introduced, it was known for its avant-garde experimental take on Progressive House. And James was <clears throat> particularly known for pushing the limits. He had a glitchy sound. Nathan Fate came on board and it seemed like they were collaborating together and feeding off each other in terms of ideas with sound. Uh, so you, what you got was a, a, a combination of glitch and 2003 Progressive House, which I think uh, turned out really well. <clears throat> For me, the label really was strongest from 2003 to 2008. I have most of the catalog. I think I'm missing three records still that I'm still trying to get up to uh, 2008. There's a couple gaps in, in there. And from there, James became increasingly more experimental and avant-garde. And he also started to polarize his audience a little bit, not in the same way that someone like Ricardo Villalobos polarized, but uh, with James, he was becoming more and more experimental, less club oriented. And when the label first launched, it was, a, like I said, a combination of classic progressive house and glitch. So he was able to draw people into this new sound that had never been heard before. And then as you got towards 2010, 2012, James had tired it seems of the club sound and had focused more on uh, just making sounds that he thought were interesting. So I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of my top five border community tracks. And these are not the most popular border community tracks. These are the tracks that I personally have played the most at home or out, out in club sets, but mostly at home. One thing I want to point out about this label and what, what draws me to it even now is how awesome the artwork is. The first record that I'm going to talk about is a good example of that. And this is Ricardo Tobar, the El Sunset album. This came out in 2007 and it was Ricardo Tobar's first release. So imagine that for him, how excited he must have been to go right, you know, from nothing to uh, releasing on Border Community. And this is really strong. All three tracks on it are good. <clears throat> Excuse me. The one that I like the most, personally, is the B1 Made. Uh, El Sunset on the A1 was a, a favorite of my friend Doombot. He played the crap out of that. And I also think B2 Tickets was awesome. But before, any go, uh, before I go any further, let me give you a clip of Made here. Okay, so that was made. And the reason that I like that track so much is the way that it just feels like it's like careening and gaining momentum. 
It sort of has that like shoe gaze, I think is, is the right term for it, where it has that like screeching, squealing kind of high sound that, that's uh, building in intensity. And when I listen to that, I can just picture myself driving down the highway going like as fast as my car can possibly go. Uh, I love that crescendo. It's a short track. It ends a, a little bit abruptly. So if you're going to try to DJ that, just have something queued up and ready before you, uh, before you drop that in there. But I think that's awesome. And let's move on to the next record. This is Extra Welts Super Fuss slash, or I'm sorry, Super Track and Zoo Fuss on the, on the B side. Super Track was played by Sven Vaith because it, it kind of has that eclectic, uh, it's, it's predominantly techno. The track that I always liked on this and that I played a lot at home is the Zoo Fuss Mutter Mix on the B2. It's kind of like a, I picture it as being like a funeral song or uh, something that feels like you're like in a, in a dream sequence or you're very ethereal, uh, beatless. And it sounds like there's a, a voice being manipulated and put through a keyboard, if that makes sense. Uh, let's cut to the sample for that. Okay, again, that was the Zufas Mutter mix, and I really like the way that that um, those that vocal vocalish element. It sounds like somebody whispering or talking that's been heavily modified um, meanders its way throughout that track, and I, I just think it's beautiful. I know the sample I have there is a little bit crackly. I, I tried to clean the record. I, I don't know if I wore it out or if, if it's just a staticky record, but uh, sorry for the cracks and pops on that one. I did my best. Next up is one that I never heard out on a club system, but I truly wish I, I would or, or could one day. And that is Border Community 01. This is the one that, that got the label running and got it off the ground. And rightfully so. The main mix has the, that classic Holden slash Nathan Fake glitch thing going on. But man, that bass line, there's no bass line out there like that. Uh, James was making crazy wacky club tracks back in, back in the day. I think the um, the James Holden Safari mix or Safari remix is also pretty wonky too. But this one, man, if you were standing in front of the club stacks, listening to this, you know, in like a super club, I think it would just it would just completely crush you. I'll give you a clip of that here. Let's let's go to the clip. Yeah, so you can see, I mean, glitch combination going on and and rolling, wonky, glitchy bass line. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, one of a kind. It sounds like he was just turning knobs and going crazy. I love it. And it's like a nine or ten minute jam sesh. What a way to kick off a label. Next up, a little bit more on the we'll say um, ambient side. Actually, I don't know how to describe the genre of this. This is Nathan Fake's Drowning in a Sea of Remixes. I'm I'm going to I'm going to reserve from labeling this. The the track that I like the most is You Are Here, the Fort Dax remix. It's about 8 or 9 minutes and it I can I can say that it's a very happy, uplifting song. It has classic symphonic type uh, like a flute and all types of like classical instruments thrown into it, but I can't t <laughs> I can't tell you what genre it is. I know that it's very nice to listen to around the house, and it's uh, something that you could play for somebody that you had over that maybe wasn't necessarily into club music, but just wanted to hear a really interesting song. 
I've, I've always loved it. And um, I just, I think it's a classic in their catalog that might be a little bit underrated. Some of you guys might be hating me for not mentioning some of the more obvious tracks uh, like Nathan Fake, The Sky is Pink, or Outhouse. I'm not saying that they're bad songs. I'm just, I'm just going on the ones that I like the most. So I just wanted to reiterate that before you guys crucify me. Last up, <clears throat> we have Nathan Fake's Silent Night. This is a take on the classic... Christmas song which is wild and it's cool it's like a little seven inch and it looks like a little white snowflake I always thought that this was fun to break out during Christmas time let's cut to a clip of that Okay, so as you can see, that's a pretty fun, glitched out, Nathan Fake rendition of, you know, a song that's probably one or 2,000 years old. I, I have no idea, but I always thought that was cool. And again, you get, you get the cool artwork, the snow theme, and Border Community always gives you the feeling of just being out in some Dutch wonderland somewhere. Very cool stuff. So I want to say to James Holden, thank you for years and years of dedication, uh, keeping the vinyl format alive, keeping those awesome covers alive. I know that um, some of your fans, and myself included, have, have felt polarized by your music over the years. Um, hey, that's how it goes. You, you can't push boundaries and also make everybody happy at the same time. I respect you very much. I, I love the label, and I, I hope you, I, I wish you many more years of success. Take care.